No, I need more practice. Alright, let me get your volumes. So if you didn't already know, I am playing Middle Tree Arc Strider for the entire month of January. This is due to a charity incentive on a stream for the Game to Give Charity, the iPads for Kids charity from Bungie. It's a really good cause. Anyway, my top donor selected that I play out of all the subclasses in Destiny, Middle Tree Arc Strider for the entire month. And I'm looking at this as a fun opportunity, a fun little experiment to, for once, master a class in Destiny. If you know me, I bounce around from every subclass in the game. I switch between subclasses like I switch between audio recordings when I make a mistake in the script. Anyway, no, I'm just playing. I don't do scripts. Anyway, let's talk about the build. Middle Tree Arcstrider has a ton of possibilities, and I'm sure you're hung up on seeing me at 4 mobility. I know what you're thinking. But trust me, with Shinobu's Vow and this perk called Bolstering Detonation, which grants me class ability when I damage an enemy with a grenade, you have to understand that Shinobu's also gives me grenade energy for landing grenade hits. So in other words, by landing grenade hits, I always have a dodge. And I'm also running double bomber on the class item, so if I dodge, I get more grenades. This allows me to go into my other stats like resilience to maybe survive a body shot of a high impact sniper in an empowering rift and then keep my recovery up so I can get back into fights faster. I also have my intellect stat cranked up at 9 because oftentimes I will switch off of Shinobu's Vow to Raiju's Harness. On my helmet, I swap between Dynamo and Bow Targeting. Yes, Bow with Shinobu's Vow is not a joke, it's not off meta, it is very competitive. But Dynamo is just some free super energy, and it does add up, especially when I use Raiju's Harness. I'm also using Precision Charge, so when I get double kills with my hand cannon, I proc the Charge with Light, which then activates high energy fire and allows me to two-tap with my hand cannon. But Kami, that situation never comes up in Trials, it's not competitive. Oh, let's kill yeah. clip. Yeah. Yep. Because oh, okay. I was charged. I was charged. It stacked. <clears throat> Need I say more? Okay, what else about this build? We have Powerful Friends, which says that if I get charged with light, my teammates get charged with light, and it gives me more mobility for my dodge cooldown. Then I also have Radiant Light. Popping my super charges nearby allies, so if they also have Powerful Friends, that will charge me back. If I run over Orbs of Light, I also become charged, and like I said earlier, if I dodge, I get grenade energy from the bomber. Okay, I also switch to Raiju's Harness whenever I have a super, because this completely changes the way I play this Arc Strider. Deactivate Whirlwind Guard, guarding does not consume super energy. This has so much flexibility. I can begin to get into it a little bit here, but I honestly think it's worth saving for a separate video. The important takeaway with Raiju's Harness is that on Middle Tree Arc Strider, it cancels a lot of nonsense in this game, besides Chaos Reach and the Devil's Ruin Pistol. So if you want to ruin, I guess no pun intended, a Middle Tree Arc Strider's day, use one if not both of those things. For everything else in the game, there is a good chance that Middle Tree Arc Strider can, Uno Reverse, reflect whatever they throw at it back at them. For this reason, you can use Raiju's Harness as a get out of jail free card. If you get frozen, just pop your super, then deactivate it. If someone throws a tornado at you, pop your super, reflect the tornado, and then cancel your super. Or use it for a revive. Pop your super, guard, get your revive, and deactivate. It gives you, like I said, so much flexibility for making plays that it ends up being a top option. Not off meta, a genuine top option. 
you don't even have to be defensive with it. You can play very aggressive with Raiju's Harness because if you die, you do keep your super energy. It's kind of crazy how much they don't tell you about this exotic. I, for one, have been using it as a charge with light catalyst. I will start a round in trials, pop my super, and then immediately deactivate it. I'll keep about three quarters of my super, but all my teammates are charged with light, which means something like Ariana's Vow goes from a hand cannon to a sniper rifle. I think that's very powerful. Friends. Pun intended. Now hopping off the Raiju train, let's talk about Shinobu's Vow. This exotic is what you see in the background. This essentially enables a free push once you have a little bit of chip damage. Because, as you saw in the opener clips, there was a time where I threw a grenade at a warlock and it kept tracking it for 9 seconds. Even if your grenade only tracks for 2 seconds or the skips barely damage it, what you're really doing is buying yourself time. You recover with your 10 recovery, they're still getting hurt and they might not even be uh, using 10 recovery. So, by landing 90 damage from the hand cannon, throwing a skip, getting your health back and pushing in, it makes it very easy for your team to pick a smart time to engage and collapse together. For this reason, Shinobu is maybe the best initiator in the entire game. So what I'll do is I'll use a bow like the Wish Ender to see through a wall, then shoot somebody in the body or head and chunk a skip grenade. Oftentimes it will pick up the kill, but if it doesn't, it's really easy for your teammates to swoop in and clean it all up. There are still a lot of builds I have yet to explore with Middle Tree Arc Strider, but I do think these are going to be my main two. Yes, there is the Shinobu's Vow Super Suit, but it's a little more dangerous with Stasis running around. So I think this mix of Grenade and Dynamo Dodge from Grenades is a better version of the Super Suit since it offers more flexibility. Overall, I'd rate my play as a Middle Tree Arc Strider in terms of understanding all the matchups, in terms of understanding exactly how far my melee goes and how my abilities work, and the damage values that stack with and without Charge of Light. I would rate my knowledge and play at around 6. After playing Trials of Osiris for the entire day with Cool Guy, I would say that up to about a 7, just because I naturally got in more engagements and started to learn the matchups. What I think can push me from a 7 to an 8 is simply learning skip grenade angles on the map to either clear out a sniper rifle or buy me a few seconds. On this last map that was Radiant Cliffs and Trials, there is a situation that comes up where if you're spawning in the trench, you cannot possibly get to the power ammo before the enemy team puts a barricade on it or just camps it. You have no chance. So what you can do is bank a skip grenade over the map specifically to land on the power ammo right when they arrive to it, which at least delays them for a couple crucial seconds so you can set up your own fortress to counter them. Otherwise, you just can't get there fast enough. The next skill I need to master is the beginning animation of the Arc Strider Super. You can reflect stuff during the pop animation, which means that I can use it with Raiju to act as a reflection and Teus ward on demand for only one-fourth of my super. Another skill I have to pay attention to is the melee. Yes, the melee. While it is easy to use, I think there is a knowledge gap of knowing what floor texture is going to eat the melee. It sounds stupid, but there were so many rounds and trials where I'm sure to hit three people with the melee, and it ends up hitting zero because the floor texture eats the melee. So it's just gonna take me some time to figure that out. What can push me from an eight to a nine in terms of mastery with this Arc Strider is my aim. I have to have more consistent aim, which will translate to taking people out without a special weapon. I can slide in, shoot them once in the head with the hand cannon, and then arc wave melee to clean up. I could even combo this with a quick draw swashbuckler hand cannon once I get more in tune with my aim. Since the arc wave melee does pop you up in the air after activating, there is a need to have to do a 180 degree turn and hit somebody with the shotgun almost instantly before they trade you out with their shotgun. So it's also going to require very fast target acquisition as I slide into a room in melee. Another skill for this like level 9 is the timing of my super combos. Yes, with the super you can do different light and heavy attack combinations as well as an aerial slam and an uppercut and that kind of thing. And this does translate to different damage numbers versus other supers. In fact, with the palm strike, which is two light and one heavy, you can kill a super outright. But this involves spacing yourself to not get frozen. With stasis in the game now, this makes pulling this off way harder than it has to be. And this is sort of like a fighting game, where you do have this little window of time between each light and heavy attack that you can slightly delay or speed it up 
to make sure that you catch somebody at the perfect distance away from the palm strike. Finally, to achieve a 10 out of 10 in terms of play and mastery on this Arc Strider, I think it's going to take some creativity, something I haven't thought of yet. While I do feel like I'm close to a breakthrough with using Raiju's harness, I still feel like there is so much untapped potential on this class that maybe by the end of the month I'll be able to tell you what a perfect middle tree Arc Strider looks like. I've definitely taken pride as a content creator for trying to play every class in the game and really specializing in generalizing. I would say that every subclass in the game I could play at a level of around 5 to 6, with a couple of those being 7 or 8s, but none of them really being 9 or 10s. This might be the first opportunity for me to hone a class and master it. I already know I said that in the video, but just to sink in. I'm super excited to play this, and I can't thank Phoenix enough for donating. Thank you so much, you're the absolute best. You are helping a wonderful cause and making the game very enjoyable for me, believe it or not. For the rest of the video, enjoy this Wish Ender Skip Grenade Double Primary setup. I typically run a shotgun and not double primary, but sometimes it does call for it and I do think it's competitive. So I will see you in the next one. I will be streaming right now by the way, so twitch.tv slash camicakes where I will be tackling the Iron Banner while learning this subclass. Or maybe even doing a Lost Sector for a better Raiju's Harness, even though the one I have at least hits the bare minimums. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. I will see you in the next one. Enough.